All right, let's talk about the Raiders at the Bears. The Raiders are two and one, and they are facing the Bears at in Chicago, and the Bears are a three point underdog. <laughs> so <laughs> the Bears, I believe, are zero and four. What? And what in They're, three weeks? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, they've tacked an extra loss on yeah. there. What a world we live in. I love it. I love seeing Derek. I, I, I love Derek Carr. I like seeing him succeed. I like Amari Cooper. I like uh, the I like uh, the coach, their head coach. I, I <laughs> their head coach. <laughs> His I, name is escaping you right now. Yes, Grim. it is. Uh, former Rio? Jackson, Jacksonville. Del Rio? Yeah, Jack Del Rio. Uh, I just would like to see them succeed a little bit. I yeah, I, I agree with you. I like when the the teams that are in the bottom finally rise to the top. And it, the Raiders' offense, man, has looked. Uh, very capable the past few weeks. Derek Carr, two over three hundred, over three hundred yards the past two weeks. But let let us not forget, week one he had sixty yards, right? That wasn't last year. He got hurt. Yeah, I, but just, remember, just saying. No, you don't get to just say when a guy went out for three quarters of the game. Okay. Uh, what he do you got, think? He got hurt, and he also got hurt. Uh. I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, but he's he's one who is showing a propensity to get hurt. However, however, he changed up. You know, after after getting hurt in week one, he changed up and was a little bit smarter the last two games when it came to just protecting his body, running out of bounds, doing things like that. So I I think that's something you have to do at that position. Can you believe? Do you know, Mike, what our consensus ranking is on Amari Cooper? Oh, or do you, Andy? Amari, he's got to be top five. Yeah, I have him very high. I haven't met. He is our top consensus five. number three this, this week. week. Yeah, yeah. Cooper has come on <clears throat> strong very quickly. Great, very quickly. Great so matchup against the Bears. What do we think about Alshon Jeffrey this week if he plays? If and Alshon it, Jeffrey plays. Does it matter to you at all who's the quarterback in does. terms of where you rank him? 100%. Yes. J- Jimmy Clausen. He will get all the targets, no matter which quarterback it is. I know they might be less accurate. Yeah, you have Clawson. to be able to catch the targets for them to actually matter. I, I, here's, here's my thought. One, I think that both Cutler and Alshon get on the field this week. If that's the case, then Alshon has a decent matchup. I don't think it's uh, scary, and I would put him. Alshon like Jeffrey a, or James Jones? Alshon. James, James Jones. Alshon or Dante Moncrief? Dante Moncrief. Oh, man. That's tough. He, Alshon, Alshon. Alshon. Alshon Jeffrey or Emmanuel Sanders? Emmanuel Sanders. Alshon. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey or Jordan Matthews? Alshon. That one's tough. Okay. Who, who, yeah, who I think Alshon gonna... is going to soak up targets I agree for the rest they, of the as year. As long as Cutler is there as the quarterback, Alshon Jeffrey will be, should be a top 10 guy. So we like, we like Derek Carr as a spot start this week. We like Amari Cooper. What do we think of, is there anybody else? You know, would you start Crabtree? Would you start Bennett? Yeah, Only I think you're a, starting Bennett. Yes, you're starting. You have to start. Yeah, Bennett. you have to yeah. start Bennett. You have to start the tight end against the Raiders. This is a new rule instituted this yeah. year. If you have a tight end against the Raiders, Gary Barnage has solidified this rule for me at least until further notice. If you have a tight end against the Raiders, you get 30 points. All right, we got to get through a couple more games and then we'll get to our starts of the week. So stay tuned for that. The Chiefs are going into Cincinnati and facing the Bengals. Um, the Chiefs just lost to Green Bay on Monday night, short week, going into Cincinnati, a Cincinnati team that is playing very, very well. They look awesome. Uh, the weapons are there for Dalton. And honestly, if you just look at the tape, this is going to sound crazy. Andy Dalton's playing better than Andrew Luck this year. Yeah, that's that's not crazy. I, well, I mean, crazy. I, it sounds crazy. Not just, just oh, fantasy. Yes. Not just yes. fantasy. I mean, just like as a quarterback, he's playing better. Well, think about this. And we talked about this, I think, way in the offseason. But last year... Andy Dalton had an injured A.J. Green, had no Marvin Jones, had no Tyler Eifert. He had all of his weapons depleted, and he didn't have Gio, that. Gio was hurt, too, wasn't he? Yes. Right. Gio missed some games, another great pass-catching target. Now he gets all of those guys back, and I think there's been an unfair rap on Andy Dalton. So we'll talk about and that. And Geno Atkins on the defensive side is back, which makes a huge, huge difference. difference to the game flow. And the fact that they're not coming back from a thousand points down. I mean, you know, Andy Dalton having to go out and sling it thirty five times is not gonna end well, generally. Uh, so so that's the that begs the question then. Would you start Andy Dalton over Andrew Luck? This week? Uh no. I, I don't have the I don't have the guts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This week 
Andrew Luck, Luck is a great matchup. Such a great just, matchup. That just has to do with your kind of the way you play fantasy. I mean, if you're if you're the kind of guy who's like, you need to punish Andrew Luck for his performances for you, <laughs> and you're you're happy putting Take him on your bench, on bench, you can do that. Uh, I'm not that kind of guy though. So let's talk about AJ Green exploded. at Your chance to buy low on him is is gone. gone. Uh, we're starting Green. What about Marvin Jones as a flex start? I like it. I, I I can dig it. The the Chiefs defense, the secondary at least has been uh, highly suspect, and I I think that uh, Marvin can can bust loose. It may I'm talking not a great game, but you know fifty sixty yards. Is Charles the only guy you want to start on Kansas City heading into Cincinnati against that defense? No, Zeus. Oh, Zeus is right. an, yep. Zeus is an every week yep. start for me. And what do we think about Tyler Eifert? Chance to bounce back. Absolutely, he he dropped a touchdown because of semantics of the new catch rule. If he if that rule is slightly different, like or if it's the same rule as it was, you know, five years ago, then Eifert would have had a great game. Yeah, I like almost all the Bengals. What about Jeremy Hill? Oh man, Jeremy Hill going Hill, up against Hill or Bernard? Who would you start between them? I'm still That's the first question. I'm still going to start Jeremy Hill um, because I'm a glutton for punishment. He's still technically the starter on the team. I want to see where we have him. You, you can keep talking about that. I want to uh, see our comparison where we have the two guys. And the, I mean the the Chiefs, they have a strong. Yeah, we have Geo ahead. They have a strong running game, but we saw Eddie, an injured Eddie Lacy, handle them pretty well. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with Aaron Rodgers, but uh, uh it it, I'm still if you have Hill. I don't know if you have a better option it, it, from or, or if you maybe you grab Dion Lewis who's on a bye week so he's not helping you this week but I I can't think of a a lower tiered option that you grabbed with Hill who can be who Would can you be play Devontae Freeman over Jeremy Hill? Yes. Hey, There's, that's I, a good one. Yeah. Can I have you guys rank these three guys that I know I see a lot of questions on for this week these three guys. Jeremy Hill, Justin Forsett, and Lamar Miller. So you got Lamar Miller against the Jets in London. Justin Forsett, we just talked about uh, against Pittsburgh. Give me Forsett, then Hill, then Miller. I would go Hill, Forsett, Miller. And I go same as Andy, Forsett, okay. Hill, Miller. All right, let's talk about the Texans heading into Atlanta. Atlanta is almost a seven-point favorite. This is a high 47-point uh, over-under. You've got the potential for Arian Foster to return in this game. And this is my... Oh, no. no. Andy's almost <laughs> upset of the week. I love hearing you're almost upset of the week because every time it just punches me right in the in the. Listen, junk. the Falcons defense is not that good. They are a, a bottom half defense. They gave up uh, a ton of yards on the ground to Joseph Randall. A ton of first half yards. I understand. I understand. But they gave up four touchdowns to running backs last yes. week. And uh, they're not great through the air. If the Texans get Arian Foster back and their defense plays more up to par to what we expect it to be, which honestly in fantasy it's been underwhelming. I saw a lot of leagues where Houston was dropped this week, and I don't blame you because they haven't, they haven't scored and they're not, they're not getting turnovers. But I'm telling you right now, this is, this is my upset pick of the week because Houston has the type of defense and they've been kind of in every game that they've been in. And so I think they can stop the run in Devontae Freeman. And that will force uh, Atlanta to find another pass catcher than just Julio Jones. Maybe they can win the entire game just on the back of Julio Jones, who, by the way, in an article today said he can do a lot better than he's doing. Good. By Good. the way, he's, he's on pace for 2,300 yards and 21 touchdowns. Julio! <laughs> oh, and 181 receptions is his current pace. <laughs> <laughs> which would break. Do you know what the record is? Do you guys know that? It's got a uh, 150. 143. Do you know who did it? Jerry Rice? Yeah, I'll go with Rice. No, Marvin Harrison. Hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, 143. So he's on pace to smash that record, which, you know, I'm sure he'll get hurt before then. So yeah. All right. Uh, that being said, all of that uh, almost upset of the week mess, uh, who do we – are we starting Foster if he's active is the first 100 question. 100% we are starting Foster if he is active. I don't think they're going to just throw him out there for 10 or 15 carries. I don't. I agree with that. I think he's either all in or all out. I agree. They, that's what they've done with him in the past almost every time, and there's been plenty of times where he's come back off of an injury, and every – you know, he, he rocks it game one. My number one wide receiver on the week is in this game, and his name is not Julio Jones. DeAndre Hopkins? He's my number one this week. I thought your number one I thought was you Steve just Smith. said Steve No, Smith. Steve Smith's my number one in PPR, number two in standard. Okay. Hopkins is my number one in standard. Gotcha. So right. Julio's three in both of those, by yep. the way. But 
DeAndre Hopkins. I love Hopkins this Target week. monster. Good defense to play against. Uh, Falcons are 24th against the pass. If you have Hopkins, you're starting him and you're dancing. That's, that's <laughs> dancing my in the thought. Street. Yeah. So, Hankerson? Uh, Hankerson, Hankerson over, Roddy? over Roddy. Hankerson over Roddy? Yes, absolutely. All right, you you have would, to at this would point. Would you flex Hankerson? Is that a consideration for you? He's he's among that that crop of guys we always talk about. That's just that weird, nebulous. Uh, Let me of, ask you this: kind of gross guys, but sure. Three strikes when you bowl is called a turkey. 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 What is it when you get if Roddy White gets three gooses in a row? Retirement. <laughs> 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 I believe that's what that's called. Oh, I I, I think him and. Uh, Andre Johnson might have to go out. Oh man, hang out. I don't flex. Go this. bowling. I don't flex the wide receiver two for Atlanta right now until no. they figure that out. We we knew you know Kyle Shanahan targets one guy. You know he's always great for that wide receiver one, but the, his wide receiver twos haven't ever been. By the time you're ready to play Hankerson, Devin Hester will be back. So get ready, get ready for I that. I think to Devin just... Hester is was cleared. Was he? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, so I definitely I agree with Jason then on that. I don't know. I I like uh, if. As long as Roddy's going to keep doing this, I like Leonard Hankerson moving forward. Um, Mike, if Foster is declared out before the game, who do you start Alfred Blue over? And Alfred Blue's the guy, right? Yeah. Alfred, I think Alfred Blue is the guy with, with the volume, at least, that he got last week. I think he had 31 carries or something just crazy. If you're wondering about where I have these guys on my rankings, I put Blue and Foster directly next to each other because I don't know the situation yet. So they're both ranked kind of low. If we get more information, I'll update my Foster ranking, and I'm sure we will all do yeah, that. Yeah, that, he's all over the place because, for me, I ranked Blue as in he's playing, and I have Foster pretty much out. I put zeros yeah, in Yeah, actually, there. Foster, you don't have uh, – I believe Mike I, gave, do, Mike I don't have, have Foster ranked. in yeah. there. I, I, gave, I gave him uh, one, one carry for one yard just <laughs> so that he's there but not really. And to answer Mike's question, I've got Alfred Blue. If he is the guy, I've got him over Bernard, Lamar Miller, C.J. Spiller – and uh yeah. and yep. Dunbar. All right.